the eviction process was tailor made for the state of California. It's great. <laughs> so, so three day notice, 30, 60, 90 day notice to terminate tenancy. The reason we start this on two different branches is because that's how it starts, right? Depending on where you fall on Tenant Protection Act, and I'm not going to go into that could be a whole class all by itself with Tenant Protection Act. Depending on where you fall on that is how much notice you need to give. Also depends on how long the people have been in the property. Uh, between those two, you determine whether it's a 30, 60, 90 day notice to terminate tenancy. This is the terminate any tenancy. This is if your leaf is expiring, that's not enough. You still need to terminate the tenancy. And then you start in on this track and you kind of start at that tenant does not move out. On the other one is the three day notice. That's the one you're most familiar with, also referred to as pay or quit. We run our rents. We give them a grace period up till the fifth. Everybody thinks that's when the rents do, but it's not. It's due on the first grace period till the fifth. On the 5th, we charge a fee for them. After the fee is charged, probably by the 7th, we're hitting this three-day notice. And so the 7th, we got three-day notices going out all across the city. And amazingly, a lot of people pay after they get that notice. If they pay, the matter ends. That's great. You can see that. If it does not pay, then we jump down to landlord files, unlawful detainer, summons, and complaint. At this point, this is usually what people are saying, hey, we're going to file an eviction. Right. This is the actual eviction. We take a package, the lease, the ledgers, how much is owed, all the notices that we've given. We put that administrative package together and we send it over to our attorney. So you follow that line down. These are the four different responses from that. Tenant doesn't respond. We prepare a default judgment. We get a writ of possession after the default judgment. Sheriff's notice, and then we go to sheriff's eviction. Sheriff's eviction is the sheriff actually knocking on the door. At that point, it's pack your stuff and go. And tenant files an answer, demand for a jury trial. And for a little while there, we were actually, that was running faster than if they did a default. Because the default side paperwork was backed up and they didn't have people processing it, a tenant would file a jury trial thinking they were slowing it down. In reality, that track was running on time. By the way, I have never been to a, a trial that we lost. As much as you hear bad about California, this is administrative law. And if it's done correctly, the eviction process is not a complicated process. And if you do it right, it works. It's slow. The slow is not to be considered the punishment. The slow is all done on the court side, not responding correct. Tenant files demur or motion to strike. You get a hearing. Tenant has a motion to quash summons of service. Those are very rare um, and they usually don't go very far. Notice of service would be something like, oh, you didn't really give me the notice. Well, for the most part, that's a mute argument because they trust the property manager as a third party neutral and they just assume that if we said we gave it to them, we give it. It doesn't necessarily happen if it's 101, but it'd be kind of hard to get that. I've never had it go to pass. Memorandum set for trial, mandatory settlement conference. So we do have that conference almost every time. We very seldom have a jury trial. That actually usually just gets done by a judge. Administrative law, they take care of it right there. We do almost always go for that settlement out in the hallway. Sometimes it does make sense to settle, and sometimes it doesn't. I'm getting to the point now where what should have been a settlement process, what do I mean by that? It means I'll do a stipulation and I'll say, okay, if you move out, we're here, we're going to win. But if you move out by you know the end of the month, then we won't go ahead with this eviction and put it on your record. And sometimes that is easier, but lately I've been advising against it because the stipulation, all the stuff that's supposed to happen automatically from the court, does it happen automatically? It winds up taking much longer. Now I'm just going to go ahead and go through with the eviction. That may change at some point, but for right now, we're following through with the entire eviction once we get there. Trial, we don't usually have long trials. Usually they're an hour or two while you wait for your case to come, and that's about it. Tenant stays in possession. If the tenant wins, they stay in the possession. They do have to pay the back rent. Even if they win, they get the cost of the suit back and recovers attorney fees. I've never had it happen. I don't understand how a tenant would win unless you just totally screwed it up. Tenant loses. You get a judgment, sheriff's notice, sheriff's eviction. The judgment is a part that a lot of people skip over. My advice is to get the judgment. It's a separate process. Costs a couple of hundred dollars more. Many owners are like, oh, we're never going to get the money anyway. But by this time, this is usually a 10 grand number. This is depends on how much the rent was. Our average rent, I think, you know, in this area, we're running about $2,400. So in five months, you just went through 10 grand. My advice is to go ahead and pay for the extra, get the judgment. With my company, we turn that judgment over to me. I actually file, we, it's a new process for us. We actually file with a company called Saturn. And under Saturn, I get to come in as a collector myself. So when it goes on their credit report, it goes on as a property manager. Instead of going on the credit report as XYC collection. That makes a huge difference. When it goes on there as a property manager, they're toast. It doesn't have to be, it's never coming off for like seven years or something like that, but they're not written from any property management company again, because it's right there on the credit report.